Okay, first thing we'll see is MVC. Okay, what is an MVC? Okay, usually in all web applications, okay, which are uh, like created in the web, okay, there's one database, okay, like SQL database or MySQL, whatever it is. It's a database using SQL or MySQL, we're interacting with the database. Okay, that is the actual data, that is the model or that is the structure in which the database is uh, created. Okay, so that is actually the model. Okay, then we have view. Okay, view is the user interface. Okay, using which the user interacts it, interacts with it. Okay, so usually in let's say if you create a form or if you try to submit a form. Okay, uh, let's say you're trying to create a new Facebook login. Okay, you enter the email address, you enter the password. No, not as of now. It will ask you to submit one form, fill all the details and then it will ask you to submit. Okay, so that form that is there, that is nothing but view. Okay, because user is able to see it. Okay, directly also he can go to the database and he can create it. Okay, but he does not have access actually. But so view is for the interaction. So if you're trying to interact with the database, then view is the one. Now let's say if you try to log into Facebook and then you try to see some stuff. So those things are coming from where it's coming from the database only. Na? So that is the model from where it is coming. And just for you to be able to see it in a like more interactive format, the view is created okay so because if you'll see that those tags and those links everything in a coded format you will not be able to understand and it will not be fun okay so to create that interaction and make it like more appealing that view is created okay so model is the database and view is the the user interaction or the interface that is provided so that you can use it and what is controller controller is the model in which you are interacting but the in the back end whatever the logic is happening that is a controller Okay, so there are different different types of controller like in the back end there is SQL running to when you trigger anything when you submit the form there is actually JavaScript first JavaScript will run so in the JavaScript it will try to create one whatever form that you have it is it will try to push it to the server and then using database interaction like SQL and all it will be inserted in the server okay so that all those things logic is handled by the controller okay so that is a normal web application MVC model so MVC is called model view controller okay in which the model is the database okay and the view is the 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 interface okay and controller is the the logic or the backend whatever is happening that is handled by the controller okay but in javascript or in in lightning okay in lightning they actually use mvvc okay so here we have different different views okay and there are two controllers as i already said there are two types of controller okay so here whatever the model is there that is the salesforce database okay to interact with the database we have only one language which is the uh, soql Okay, only using SQL you can interact with the uh, database okay and here we have two controllers actually two controllers are one is the JavaScript controller and one is the apex controller okay okay and the model is structured in like this Wait, I'll show you. okay so the first thing what we have is the view which is like normal view Okay, and like normal any other web application, we have a view. In this view, we have different different fields. Okay, and then here we have one submit button. Okay, this looks like a person or something. Okay, so then we have this submit button. Okay, so this view is connected to one controller. Okay, so here this is, let's call it a V. Okay, this is our view okay and here we have one controller okay here we write whatever the function we write function and then we put colon and we write the name of the function and then component event and handler helper sorry we put that in and so that code is there in in this okay now there is another controller here okay so there is another controller here okay this is our apex controller okay and then there is our database 
so this is our database okay in this database we have all the records okay so this apex controller in this we will write soql okay and this will interact with the database okay okay now whenever we create a component okay in that component bundle you get lots of things like first thing you get is one component dot cmp file so this is our cmp file okay then you get one javascript file dot js file okay and then you have another js file that is uh, our helper okay so we have another helper which is our js so this this maybe we can call it as helper okay so automatically when you create a component we have wiring from here to here okay from here to here okay but we don't have any connection from here to here okay automatically it will not create any class okay so this con this connection we have to establish okay this connection is automatically not there okay 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 and using this apex only you can interact with the database okay so in this component we have we put c dot whatever is the name of our javascript function so that function name will will put here and it will call our function okay now if you want we can chain that function to our helper also we can put the logic in the helper and we can call the helper from there and we can int using the helper also we can interact with the database okay so this connection also we will have to establish okay so these two connections we will have to establish okay apart from that these this one this one that is automatically connected which is called auto wiring that means whenever you can create a component automatically so this interaction you will be able to do okay from the scratch okay okay so that is this is the the structure in which our lightning components are created okay so this is the way that we will create our components and interact with the server and create any records or uh, insert any records or retrieve any records like that okay 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 so now how the interaction happens whenever somebody clicks on the button or whenever somebody clicks on some form submit or some kind of interaction is happening then we'll have to handle that click or we have to handle that interaction with the user interface and that handling we'll do inside the our javascript okay so these are our javascript okay where we'll be handling all those interaction now if you want to interact with the database that interaction whatever he has done we will pass on to the SQL okay so what we will do is we will pass using the parameters okay apart from parameters we don't have any other way to send data from JavaScript to apex okay so in apex we have to call apex we have certain like steps okay that steps we have to we have to kind of by heart in the beginning okay so because it is not like normally you call class and all it's it's a little different okay those steps to interact with apex that is a little different okay first we'll have to set up the apex which is the controller all that we'll see okay so the structure if it's clear then we'll go ahead okay this is fine okay 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 so now let me just try to open one lightning resource or we'll create a new lightning resource okay from the scratch we'll create okay lightning component okay this will say let's say demo account something okay and okay so whenever we create a lightning component okay it's asking us to check these five boxes what does this actually mean okay wherever <coughs> let's say we create this component okay so we must have some idea in the mind that this kind of component we are trying to create okay now once that is created where all places do you want to use that component like do you want to put it inside uh, do you want to put it inside any of the home tabs or any opportunity tab any tab you want to create or you want to create a separate tab or you want to go to edit page and put it inside some uh, component or you want to put it inside some quick action quick action is something like let's say if we have leads okay if we go to any of the leads let's say this one okay so whatever buttons are there in the lightning okay at the top the buttons are there these are called quick actions now if you want you can also add our component inside this quick action you you can create a quick action and we can like send email is a we can create a quick action for send email and we can 
add it inside here so if you so it's asking whether we want to add it inside the lightning quick action all or we want to add it inside a record page or we want to add it inside any other lightning page or inside the lightning tab so if we check all of them so simply it will just put some code there so that it will be compatible with these things also okay so that is what we are doing okay so once we submit this then automatically it will put one line of code there okay so that it will be able to it will be just become compatible with that if you see here it is now app hostable that means we are uh, we can add it inside apps also okay and then flexi page is there that means we can add it inside all the pages then we have something called record home page also we can add okay has record id we'll see okay has record id we'll leave as of now okay then community also we checked so it is also available for community then we have lightning quick action also so it is able to add inside the light, lightning quick action also okay quick action is nothing but it's a it's a button it's a button in any of the components here any of the objects so this button is there these buttons are called quick actions okay okay so this was about that so whatever we checked if you don't check that this implements part will not come okay only that only that is the difference you can put this manually also you can come and you can put this also then it will become compatible but you will have to remember like what flexi page blah 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 so instead of remembering that you just check it automatically it will put it here okay 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 so now our component is going to be compatible with uh, quick action with also tabs and with also record type pages okay 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 now from here uh, okay so from here we can only interact with the controller from the component we can interact only with the controller and that is a javascript controller because this is this is auto wired okay so this component bundle is there you don't have to create a function and you don't have to write logic uh, or write connection or establish connection between this component and javascript but if you create a web application like from the scratch then you will have to do all those connections and you'll have to write the script then from there you'll have to connect with the server and all that you don't have to do here so this is automatically done for you which is called auto wiring okay and every con component can interact with only its own controller it cannot interact with other components controller okay 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 and there is another thing here bundle version okay this we'll see later okay and then if you want then you can pass the or you can pass whatever logic you have you you can pass inside the helper you can just put here helper okay helper dot whatever the name of the function let's say we have one helper function okay then helper method you can write inside the helper method you can pass the our component okay no oh, sorry hmm. so our helper method this method will be called okay inside this if you want any logic then we can put it let's say alert say hi something okay so this is how we will call our helper method now if you want to pass the event you can pass the event also okay whatever event has happened let's say on load has happened or on click has happened okay that you can pass there also okay as of now this is this is called method chaining okay so inside this if you want to call another method you can also call another method okay let's say we can call something like let's Okay, let's say we have my action one okay and this is my action two and this is let's say my action three okay so these are different different functions okay now if you want you can call this function from this function this function from this function this function from this function so that is called a, a function chaining so you can do function chaining inside the same javascript controller or you can also delegate it to the helper okay function chaining is a general uh, it's not a lightning concept it's a general programming concept even in apex also you have that like you are uh, actually creating some kind of helper um, methods or helper classes to use in the trigger have you created any triggers and all so basically what it's the best practice is that you create one trigger for one class or one cl one trigger for one object okay and any kind of interaction then you have to handle that inside another another class so you will not have the whole logic inside the trigger only you just pass on to the main class okay like that so in that case your helper or your your trigger class will be like crisp and the code will be very clear 
okay so that is the so function chaining is a general programming concept okay so here also we can do that function chaining okay or you can delegate it to our javascript uh, helper also okay 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 now let's say if here if we have one paragraph only we'll create in this paragraph we'll just handle on click just to see if our helper is working or not so from here we'll call c dot our helper method from here we cannot call the helper method directly we'll have to call our javascript main controller method okay so we'll call it here let's say we'll write some click me something and let me save this now let's say as of now we don't have we are not calling these okay so if you want we can comment these as now so here also commenting works in the same way as it works in the uh, apex okay single line multi line comments you know single line like that okay single line multi line is nothing but in if you want one comment in a one line you just put double slashes so whatever you write here it will be commented and multi line is something like like this okay so this is you can add multiple lines inside the comment the multi line comment okay as of now we'll comment all this okay and we are passing our uh, logic inside our helper method and we are calling the helper method from there okay let's see if this is working or not okay okay so now we'll just have one paragraph and in that paragraph we'll have something called click me if you click on that it will automatically call our controller this controller we call our uh, helper okay so let's try to put this component inside one application to see if it's working or not okay so we'll create or we'll add it inside our um, application okay some application so here we'll comment whatever is there inside okay and here just we will add one we'll do this c colon demo account yeah and we'll close this now we'll go and preview Now this preview should come and when you click our it is getting called so here it is not doing directly it is passing it to the helper if you want to further like check it out then we can put it here also one we'll call comment uh, uh, let's say we'll try to alert mm, okay we'll create another paragraph here okay we'll just pass the message here okay so that because alert will pop up then it will stop the further uh, then unless you click the okay it will not go to the next step so we don't want to do that so we'll just uh, put one id equals to let's say we'll call it as a message okay and inside this we'll leave it as blank so whatever message we want to pass we'll pass it inside this only and yesterday or uh, in the previous class we discussed the document dot get element by id dot inner html you can change the inside content right so similarly we'll do that inside instead of putting alert we'll do something like that so here we'll put document dot get element by id and in the id we'll put as a message okay dot inner html equals to we'll put something like a uh, called or let's say Mm, controller called. So we can put maybe JavaScript controller is called. Okay, the semicolon. Okay, now similarly we'll just take this thing and we will pass it inside. Instead of alert, we'll comment this alert. And here we'll put document dot element dot in your HTML. Here we'll put something like a uh, helper javascript called okay so now we'll get to know which one is called when okay okay but probably it will happen so quick that we'll not be able to figure out like when that happened okay it will delegate it so quickly 
so when you click on this so directly helper javascript is getting called so what we will do just to figure it out we will create another paragraph here and we will put one message one here okay and this message one we will change only from this okay okay and paragraph okay fine I'm just try to refresh this okay okay now when we click so our javascript controller is also called and our helper javascript is also called okay so both of them are getting called first this is getting called javascript controller is called then helper is getting called okay okay or if we put alert then we will get a sequence also we'll see Just take this comment here. Okay. Okay. Now when we click, so JavaScript controller is called first. Okay. Now when we click, click OK, then our helper JavaScript is getting called. Okay. Okay, so that is the sequence. Okay. Okay, so this is something like construct uh, or maybe what you can call. Have you heard of constructor chaining? You've heard, no? So that is the Java Java concept actually. So similarly, you have here uh, function chaining also. Okay, so just like that, you can imagine calling Apex classes also as some kind of function chaining only. Okay, so to understand it simply, you can uh, you can imagine it like that. Just like just the way you are calling helper class or helper function from our main controller just like that we'll be calling our apex class also okay because apex class is necessary for our database interaction okay 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 now next thing what we'll see is we'll see something like okay mm, okay so in our function here okay uh, you know about this what what this component stands for Huh. So that component instance is getting passed to our uh, controller. Okay, so that we can uh, we can interact with our component, or we can try to grab our component uh, variables. Okay, and then event. So event is uh, something like uh, let's say our button is getting clicked. Okay, our button is getting clicked, but we are using JavaScript to handle that. So instead of that, if we want events to handle that, like we have something called event built in our Lightning. Okay, in the first day, maybe I've, I've told you how to handle events in a component and application, right? So if one if one component is throwing an event, then who can handle that event? Or uh, if if maybe onload event is happening, then how to handle that? Just like that, button click is also an event. Okay, so this whatever we are doing right now, that we are using HTML concept and JavaScript thing. Okay, but in Lightning, you have to handle these things in event. In small scale, it doesn't matter, but in large scale, when you're actually creating a component, then you have to use events. Okay, so how do you ha handle that event? So let's say as of now, uh, here what we will do. So let's say our on click is happening. So here we just have to put this single line, which is our event. So how do we handle that? Helper dot function, or just like this. Okay. So here, when whenever you uh, interact, okay, whenever you click on that, one event is generated. That on click event is generated. So that event you can handle it here. Okay, you can put just event dot uh, component or using this event you can handle on load or any kind of events. Okay, that we'll see in the future only. Okay, okay. So apart from that, um, function chaining I told. Okay, handling click. Okay, then lightning layout layout item. This we'll see later. Helper function. So helper functions we so on. A helper function uh, using helper function is very simple. You don't have to do much. Just you have to do helper dot whatever the function name. That is it. 
Yes, yes. So using this, uh, like if you have a static method, let's say if you have a static method, then what you do, you use the class name dot you use the function name. Okay, just like that here we are using helper dot helper method, whatever the name of the method is there, we'll just use it here. Okay, and if you want to uh, get that v dot uh, whatever attribute is there, if you want to pass that attribute from from our component to JavaScript controller and then you want to further pass it to helper also, then you can pass it in the component. So just the way that our JavaScript controller is receiving the component, this component you can pass it to our helper also. Okay, so it will be able to receive the component here. So you can put something like component here. Okay, so that it will be able to receive that parameter whenever you pass. Okay, so from here also you can able to access the attributes. Okay, so calling helper method is pretty simple. Just use helper dot name of the method and then you can access. Okay. Okay, that is one thing. Okay, then we have to use, okay, these things we will see. Okay. So now our second controller will come into picture, which is our Apex controller. Okay, so for that, first thing you need is you need a class. You have to create one class. Okay. So just to create a class, just like normally how you create, just go to file and then click new and you create one Apex class. Okay, we can call it maybe demo helper. Okay, so we are creating a Apex class right now. Okay. Okay, so we have one class created. Now inside this class, how to interact with this class without functions, you cannot interact. So you have to create methods so that you can interact with the class. Okay, let's say, so you have to create one, you can create one static function. Okay, what we'll do is we'll write one public static, uh, let's say my method you can call. Okay, and then you can so this function, what we can do is we'll put one system dot debug. So we'll just put one log if this function is getting called. Okay, as of now, we'll keep it simple. Okay, so we'll call it apex class or apex my method called. Whenever this function is called, it will generate a log and it will put it inside the system dot debug log. Okay. Okay, we have a pretty simple class. Don't have much. So public static, we have to put one return type also. We'll put it as void. Okay. 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 So there are certain steps. Okay. Using which you have to do that. So first step is that we have to define. Okay. Or even before this, what we have to do is we have to connect this particular component to our apex controller just like if you create a vf page in the top of the page you have apex colon page that is the main uh, like the parent component so inside that you write controller equals to some class name right so there you declare the class name so that it understands that whenever something is happening it is going to get to the class just like that here also inside our component or a component we have a attribute okay and that attribute is called controller Okay, so here we put controller, okay, equals to what we'll put is we'll put the class name. That's it. So here we'll put demo helper. Okay, so now it's it knows that if any kind of uh, server side interaction, if, if Apex is getting called, then it has to call from this particular. Okay, so Hmm. Okay. Okay. So to set up connection with Apex, <clears throat> okay. First thing we have to do is we have to first obviously we need one class. Okay. So we have to create one, create a class. Okay. So once we have a class created, then we have to connect our component with the class okay connect component with the 
class and to do this you don't have to do much inside the our aura component okay whatever our aura component attribute is there so inside this but just we have to add one attribute which is called controller controller equals to or we'll write our uh, class name okay we just have to write our class name so our connection is established okay okay this is the first step okay now the second thing or maybe the third thing inside the class okay the method that we have created that method should be aura enabled okay okay so what we have to do so so the class that we have created okay so inside the class to make this method compatible with lightning by default it is not accessible by our lightning okay if you execute this right now it will say that this particular class it is not able to find okay why because this method is not aura enabled just to enable this for lightning what we have to do we just have to add one line here aura enabled okay that means now this method we can call from our controller okay so this javascript controller can access this method right now okay okay that is another thing so we have to make it aura enabled so add or make a method visible from component okay so from the component now it will be able to access our method okay now once we have do that uh, we have done that so our uh, class side is done so logic apart, uh, leave the logic as of now so our uh, method is connected to our controller right now okay but still you cannot interact you cannot call the method as of now okay to call that you have to do three more things okay so it's a little different step okay so first what we'll have to do is we'll have to create one action okay so using this action we will be calling our controller okay so first we have to do one action okay now after action what we have to do is we have to if you have any parameters if that method is receiving any kind of parameter then you have to set that parameter okay so if that parameter is there then we have to set parameters okay now once you have set the parameter then you have to set a callback okay let's say you call the function and that function uh, that method ret returns some value so that value you have to handle somewhere right you have to, that value you have to save in the attribute okay something you have to do with that whatever the data that you are getting from the apex okay so that action whatever is happening or that interaction from the apex class whatever the value that you are returning that you have to put in the set callback okay so there are three steps here first is the action you have to define one action so this action will do what this will tell the controller that you have to call this particular method okay or connect the method uh, js function with the apex method okay so now here you are just defining that this particular method is available so you can do okay so what we will use using uh, to get this we have to use component dot get okay so using the component dot get here what we will write here we will write c dot whatever our method name is there okay so our method name is my method okay we'll just take this and we'll write it here so that means we are just establishing that this particular component is available okay so you can get this method okay and how it will get the method because it is already aura enabled and the connection is already established here so using this controller it will go to this class and it will check for this particular method my dot method and my dot method it will, it will be able to find so it is fine okay so that was one step okay this is a little complicated it's not like normal process so but you will have to do this for like if you want to create any apex class interact with that you have to do that for all the all the methods okay so first step is done okay now if let's say if you have parameters then you have to set params you have to use set params these are the javascript functions using this you can do the function okay so inside this the syntax will be something like this okay so first this function is there okay and then you have to use two brackets inside this bracket what you will do is you will put those things like uh, uh, let's say we have one parameter receiving uh, let's say we receive one let's say a string mm, some str we are receiving okay so the name of the parameter is str 
okay now if we want to pass this okay so we have to pass like here we have to let's say whatever you have to pass to that parameter so you have two sections here whatever is before colon and what is whatever is after colon okay so before colon whatever is there whatever is the parameter name let's say str is there so this str you have to write here okay and here you have to write the value which you want to set to that parameter okay some name, some name. Huh, whatever it is so let's say if you want to pass our attribute to that parameter attribute is there in the component <clears throat> so what we can do is what we'll basically do is i'll show you here only i'll write one comment here so we'll generally do component dot get and using v dot uh, let's say some attribute attr some attribute is there so that we will get and that we will put inside our variable uh, one variable will create where let's say att okay inside that attribute or inside this variable we we got the our uh, attribute value okay now this att will write here okay so whatever is there inside the att that will be passed to str str is what str is the parameter this parameter okay so this method might get one parameter and no it might receive one parameter and it might return one value also okay so let's say this is not void okay this is let's say some string only okay and here we are not doing anything we are just returning string only so return str that's it we are not doing much okay so we are returning that value whatever value we are getting we are just returning that okay so now this return whatever is happening this we have to set inside the callback now that return value if you want to set it back to the attribute or maybe set it to some other attribute that also you can do okay because that function you might have used it for some kind of uh, logic only right like let's say let's say here you have one attribute called account okay one uh, attribute to receive one account okay let's say and then you getting the uh, record id and using the record id you are fetching that account okay so that record id you want to pass to the apex so that record id you can pass using this so using set parameters you are passing the record id here and whatever account it's getting let's say if it's not returning string it's returning an account if you want to set back set that back to one attribute so in the set callback inside this we have to just uh, just to uh, we have to set that value to our component okay okay so once you have done that all these three things then in the last step you have to enqueue the action okay that is another step so enqueue action is uh, what is happening just because uh, component might have lots of functions okay so all these functions are set in one queue okay all these functions are sent to the server in one queue okay so in order to add this particular function whichever function is there in order to add that function to that same queue so that it is getting interacted with the server okay you have to add enqueue action okay so this is a universal uh, you have to write something like uh, this so whatever action so a a stands for action okay now you have to write n q u e e n q u e u e okay so n q action inside that so whatever action we defined this action we have to pass it inside the n q action okay so that completes the step now okay so so much we have to do in order to interact with our javascript uh, apex controller ha huh, its syntax is there i'll tell you the syntax okay see so here what we are doing first let's say this is our we are defining a function okay we are defining one method in our method we have component we have event and we have helper just a normal javascript function okay now inside this the first step we are doing creating an action okay so first we are creating an action action equals to component dot get so this is let's say our apex method name okay so this is the name of the method so now we are defining that one action has to be created and that, and that action is uh, is doing what it is trying to con connect with one apex controller okay so our action is defined now after the action let's say there is no parameter so if there is no parameter we don't need to set parameters 
okay that is optional if the parameter is there if you want to pass parameter then you have to set the parameter if there's no parameter then you don't need to do that okay then what we have to do is we have to set a callback so using this action we are doing action dot set set callback so calling back which one we are calling back this one okay so that is why we need this variable action okay so action dot set, you can use whatever name you want okay but as of now we'll keep it as action only okay so this action we are trying to setting a uh, callback okay so we are calling this particular function and whatever the response that is there that response is there inside this response object okay like uh, let's say that uh, that javascript or that apex method has returned has queried one uh, account and it has returned that so that return value whatever is there that is in in which object that is there inside the response so this response will contain whatever the response we are getting from our apex method okay just like a normal like uh, if you send a http request you have a request and you have a response so request is what you send and response is what you get so browser does what it just uh, uh, interpre interprets that response so just like that that response is an object only just like that here also we have one response object okay inside this response object we'll have the response of whatever uh, interaction happened between the apex and the javascript so whatever value that returns in the first case here it is returning let's say apex it is returning one string right so this string will be inside our response object you getting okay na hmm, okay so that string will be inside response okay let's say if it returns one account object then that account will be inside this response so to get a hold of that particular account we need this response okay so now just ignore all the all this state state blah 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 so in this part is important okay we can also remove this it's not required okay we can all this log and all we can remove okay so only this part is re required okay so here what we are doing whatever the response we are getting response dot get written value this will give you the string okay now this we are just setting to our attribute that's it okay let's say if we were we, we got one account so we'll do response dot get written value inside this uh, the account will be there so that account we are just setting it back to our attribute so as we are using v v means view so this is this this thing is holding our attribute okay so inside the callback we are doing what we are just uh, getting one uh, any string or anything and we are setting it to our attribute okay and once we are done with this once we have done the set callback then you have to do the nq action in the end okay so our set callback is where did we go So in our uh, here, and then we have this one not required. This one is not required. This one, okay. Uh, okay. So we just have to create one variable for action. Okay. Uh, I have to get back here. Okay. So first thing in the set callback, there are certain steps. First, we have to create one variable for action. Okay. In the action, what we'll do, we'll just add the component dot get. Okay. This component dot get, we just we are uh, here. Okay. So to uh, whatever action we have defined, that we'll get here. Okay. So this step is not required because we are already doing that here. Okay. So parameter as of now, there's no parameter. Okay. So using the callback, so here just we will add that component dot set okay so in the callback what we'll do is we'll use that action that we have defined dot set callback okay and inside this we'll write this comma function response okay and inside this response whatever is there Okay, whatever is there inside the response, we'll just component dot dot set, and we'll set whatever the return value we have got that we'll set to our attribute. So we'll set to v dot some some attribute is there. Okay, comma response dot uh, response dot get return value. 
so whatever return value we have that return value we will set to our response that's it okay and once we are done then you have to enqueue the action if you don't do enqueue action then you will not get whatever value we are expecting okay okay now what this this part is doing is just checking if it's successful or not if the interaction with the apex class is successful or not okay if it's successful then it will do this if it's not successful then it will just log one error okay you don't need to type this you don't need to write this, this is just for safety purpose okay 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 so all that you had to do so everything whatever i said these steps is it clear okay So after that, after we have make it, made it aura enabled, then we have to do all these things. Okay, action, we have to define one variable for action. Then we have to define one, if parameter is there, then you have to set the parameter. If parameter is not there, as of now, you keep it normal only. Okay, you practice without parameter, okay. Or even if you want, you can just go, to, uh, go through the theory or something, and then we'll uh, try to see this in the action all, also. Or we have time, we can see action only. Okay, okay. So this will be maybe the step four or we'll not waste time in all this. We'll just try to do this directly. Okay. So let's say one function is there and we will create, we don't want all this demo account. Hmm. We will do something like So it is not required. Okay. So we will just create one, let's say paragraph. Okay. And inside the paragraph, we will have one, um, or what we will do is we can, we need some kind of click. So that click, let's say we'll keep this as clickable and we'll comment this thing. Okay. So we just, just imagine it as a button only as of now. Okay, so this is just a button which we can click and on, on click of this, our action is getting called. This is what we want. Okay, and here what we want, we have, we need another attribute in order to get something from there. So we will not interact with database as of now. We'll just try to get some message from our Apex class. Okay, instead of like getting an account or something. So here we need one or a, or a attribute. Okay, name equals to let's say some message only okay and we type equals to this you, this you got now like attribute how to create attribute on. okay so type we define the data type so here we put one string okay that's it default value will not put anything okay 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 or maybe we'll put some default here and so we'll come to know whether the value has changed or not okay so we'll put default only Okay, if it's a default, then it will show the default value. Now, how we'll see this value? We can see this value. We can just write here. Yeah, so here we can v dot our message. That's it. Okay, so if there is no interaction, then message will show our default value. If interaction has happened with the apex, then it will get another message. Okay, that is it. Now, when we, once we come to our JavaScript, we'll remove all these things not required. Okay, all these things will remove. Will create confusion. Okay, or what we can do, we can delegate the to our apex also. But as of now, we'll keep it simple only. Okay, and we are not calling our helper. What is this? This is our apex method only, na? So returning string. So returning string. We will not pass any parameter as of now. Okay, we'll just keep it a simple method. System dot debug will do, and we will return the same message okay so this we will return okay oh sorry this we have to keep inside the quotes so it is expecting us to return a string we are returning a string okay what is the problem variable does not exist str we are not using str anymore okay so just we are returning this string message okay that is it so let me just close out all this let me close out all this okay We'll keep it simple. If you want, we can remove all this. Not required. Or maybe we'll keep the steps. 
or we'll write our own steps only. We can remove all this part. Okay, to stop confusion, we'll do all this. So our method is getting started here, ending here. We don't need this comma. One method only. Okay, this is fine. Okay, now first thing what we have to do is we have to create one variable for action. Okay, so we'll do define action. Okay, so we will create one variable and in JavaScript there is no data type. Okay, like uh, string or uh, integer or uh, s object anything. There's no predefined or in data type. Whatever variable you give, if you just define where, it will automatically take the data type. Okay, so every variable you create, you create in form of where only. Okay, so where action we create equals to component dot get and here we write the name of our method. Okay, so my method is there. Just take the name. So here we'll write C dot. So initially I said that when you are using C, okay, when you are using C inside our component, that means it is a JavaScript controller. And when you use C inside the JavaScript, then it is our Apex method. Okay. Okay. So this is the this is fine. Okay. Now we have defined one action. Now we have to do what cell callback. Okay. So uh, we don't want this. Keep it simple. Action, and we'll do set callback. Okay. Okay. Now in the set callback, we just have to do component dot set. Oh no no no. Set callback. We have to do action dot set callback. Okay, so inside this we'll just do an action dot set call back. Okay, just make sure that whatever syntax we are writing that is correct because JavaScript will not be able to detect the error, syntax error and all. Okay, okay, so we'll just do one say set call back and here we will set uh, to this. This is a normal syntax, you have to remember this as of now. You can't do much about this. Okay, so we're setting call back and then we have to do Okay, let's not take a risk. Action dot set callback. Okay, so this will keep inside our comment. Okay, so all this thing is not required not required this is not required 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 okay so this is the only thing that we have to do okay we just set callback and then we have to do one for uh, write one function And we'll put one response here. Okay. And inside this response, in, so this is a set callback function. So inside this callback function, we need one response. So we have to compose that response here. Okay. So we have to do component. Dot. If we want to set the component, so we want to set this component, right? We want to set the, our attribute message. So we just want to set that. Whatever return value that we get, we want to set that to that. So component dot set what component we want to set we want to set our v dot whatever is our component name this component name will take okay so we will put one component name and we want to set it to which value so whatever response that get return value so whatever response we are getting that response we want to send okay so here we'll write response dot get return value okay and that is it okay so whatever response that we get from this action that response we are setting to our message okay that is it and then you have to close this okay once we are done with the, our setting callback then we have to do nq action q u e u e nq action so nq action is pretty simple you don't have to do much you just have to write this dollar sign then you have to put a, then you have to put dot, then e n q u e u e action, and you have to put that action. So whatever action that we have created, that action we have to pass it. Okay. 
okay once we are done we might also if you want to put one system dot debug log oh, it's already put so that is fine we'll get a log also if that class is getting called then our log will also generate okay and let's say our component dot set callback we want to put some check here let's say if it is getting called or not we can put one check here let's say uh, call back called so it will alarm us or alert us whenever uh, callback is generated okay any confusion in this as of now fine okay now well, let's get back to our component oops Is that from Firefox? Okay, we'll have to open the controller again. Oh, right, this was the one application. Okay. Okay, demo account. Now we'll preview this. So as of now, default. Now when you click, so our callback is getting called, and when you click OK, ah, oh, we are getting one error. Okay set callback component is not defined so we made a spelling mistake component where is the component ninth ah this one component so it came here it came here it alerted that and then it was trying to find component so there was nothing like component okay because we have defined component if we have defined let's say cmp okay if we have defined cmp only okay or maybe com yeah, that will also be same thing okay and then here also we'll have to define so this is not like you have to write the same name okay but it has to be it these three should, should be same wherever you are using that so the first parameter is getting passed our component okay okay now let's try to refresh this and see so by default we have the default value now when you click we are getting alert and when you click okay callback is getting called so our apex method is getting called okay now let's go back to our log and let's see if any log is generated so 751 log was generated so we'll see what is there inside the log so inside this log we just go to our debug only okay so our apex method is getting called so this log was getting generated from our apex class okay so this class generated on system.debug log okay okay so just to interact with the apex class we had to do so much okay these steps you have to remember okay at least this much i mean even the parameter we have to uh, pass if the parameter is there okay if there is one parameter receiving here then if you try to call it without parameter then it will throw error obviously because parameter is not receiving every time you have to call that method you have to pass the parameter if it's receiving a parameter okay okay so are these tips clear okay if you have any doubt you can always let me know i'll also give you the link from where you can actually go ahead and read this okay so first step is our action then we are setting the parameter so this will be our fifth step okay and then what we are doing is we are setting our callback sixth step okay then we are doing component dot set okay mm, this is comment only okay fine and the last step is our nq action n q u e u e action so so much we have to do okay fine okay okay so that's it for today's class okay so tomorrow what we'll do is we'll try to interact with our server more okay we'll try to get some records we'll try to set parameters also okay we'll try to get a list of and we'll see iteration all those things okay 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 any doubts anything any question huh? Hmm, okay, you practice and let me know. Yeah, I'll just...